we are creating a platform for those who are curious. One that tells the story from the artist's perspective. Moments in time captured from the innovators who are reshaping dance, music, theater, and the visual arts. This is the Working Artist Project. Hey guys, it's Darian Douglas. Welcome to the second season of the Working Artist Project. In fact, if you're back after the first season, welcome home. And if you're not, let me tell you a little bit about this podcast. I sit down with some of the most influential and talented artists from multiple fields, and we discuss the challenges of constructing a successful career as an artist. You will be inspired and motivated after listening to these amazing people conquer challenges and live life on their terms. Welcome to the Working Artist Project. All right, guys, I want to welcome the one and only, the master of everything. Oh, come on now. Peter Nelson to the Working Artist Project. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, man. I want to get right into this. Why did you choose trombone, man? It's not, it's not an instrument that, uh, that seems very popular. Man, um, so it's, not, it's uh, not even really that interesting of a story. But I, so I, I picked flute in fourth grade because I thought I had a really beautiful sound. And I got made fun of so much that I quit flute. I know that's heartbreaking, (laughs) but I quit flute. And then uh, I think they took like the band program out of my school in uh, fifth grade. And then in sixth grade, they reinstated the band program. And I I saw Tremon and I was like, yeah, that one. I I saw I didn't have any buttons and flute had a lot of buttons. So, (laughs) you know, it was a little, a little, a little bigger. So yeah, I picked Tremon and I actually immediately really loved it. And you're like, this is going to be a little easier, man. I There's thought no so. buttons on this thing. I thought so. You man, was wrong, wrong, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Trombone, trombone is a funny instrument because it seems to me like it's the most rebellious instrument. You know what I mean? And the most interesting people usually play trombone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Usually, it seems like trombone players, no offense, trombone players out there, but y'all seem to be more combative. But you All right. are more chill. I appreciate that, man. That's <laughs> kind of you. So did you did you realize that you were like making this like huge life decision to be a rebel when you chose the instrument? Uh, no, but certainly it w- I was made aware of it as I started checking out jazz music. Um, I remember, you know, r- really early when I fell in love with jazz music, I was 13 or 14. And it was almost exclusively with saxophonists and and uh, and trumpet players and, and piano players and singers. And. My my stepdad actually got me a J.J. J. Johnson record, oh, and that was okay. like I was like, oh my god, this is this is amazing. But as I started to con- as I continued to explore that, I I noticed that there was this kind of this gap. There was not as many. There's not as much representation certainly in the jazz trombone community as there was in saxophone or trumpet per se. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So who is Peter Nelson? Oh man, <laughs> how long is this video? Come on, baby, let's get in there. Um. I, I mean, just like anybody else, I, I some of all of my experiences and influences and probably a little bit of genetics and, uh, <laughs> just know. a little, just one percent <laughs> genetics. That's no, it. man. I'm sur- I, I'm, uh, some of my experiences, man, I owe so much to, uh, the people that have contributed, you know, just like anyone else, man, I owe so much to the people that have supported me and the people that have pushed me to, you know, to, to better myself and to look really critically at myself. So I, Peter Nelson, just like any anybody else, is is uh, a sum of my experiences with other people and mm-hmm. also internally. Okay, man. It, you know the one thing I admire about all trombone players that I come across is their ingenuity and their understanding that in order to make it playing this instrument, I have to always think outside of the box. You know what I mean? Like, do you think that's something that? is innate like you were born with or something that you developed and if so when did you realize you needed to develop it and how did you do that well um and i think uh i think thinking out of thinking outside of the box or anything like that is a byproduct of, of just being in a creative mindset right and just being generally creative not just in music but in everything that we do and i think i think um i'm going to kind of segue this in, into some, something else that i'm thinking about a lot lately and that's I think uh, Julia Cameron put it best when she said, we, we ourselves are creations. So the natural state of existence, I think, is creativity. And to not be creative is contrary to our true, true nature. So mm. to think outside of the box and to be creative is something that 
I think I've I've always done only because I've allowed myself to do that. And I find that um, those of those of my my friends and people I've interacted with that are adverse to that, uh, to uh, adverse to the idea that they they are not creative, um, are just they just don't you know don't trust themselves and and uh, don't trust the validity of their own you know creative p- potential content. And I think that that's I think that's an issue. We're all creative and we're all people that are have the capacity to think outside the box if we just trust that we have something to offer and nothing to prove. Damn, that's deep. Yeah, man, speaking of creativity, like what motivates you to create? Um, I mean, so, so many things, man. I, a huge motivation for me, uh, just like so many others, uh, is the people that I meet and the people, I think that, I think that this is a huge generalization, but this is something I truly believe is that the thing that the only thing that really has any inherent meaning about being alive is our inner other, you know, our interaction with other, you know, carbon based organic life forms, you know, other, our (laughs) animals and people, other conscious, you know, more consciousness. And that applies to, you know, anything natural has consciousness or has some degree of consciousness, some degree of existence. So, Mm -hmm. so I think that my experience with, with interacting with other people, and interacting with my natural environment, those nothing inspires me more than those things. And um, you know, on the on the flip side, you know, to be very intentional with my creativity, I think that art throughout history has really um, has really been on the forefront, front, or at least in support of a lot of social progress and social change. And I mm-hmm. think, especially in a time you know like the time that we're living in right now, we do have a responsibility as artists to be creating content that is that's moving the narrative forward as far as like, as far as the social needs of today. I think that that's really important. So those two things, you know, my relationship with, with people and other consciousness and then my relationship with what's existing, what exists right now in our social climate. Wow. Okay. Yeah, man. That's pretty deep. So man, you, you just said social climate. So right away I'm thinking about all of the stuff that's happening in politics and, um, all of the police shootings, mm-hmm. like you know, like specifically, I, I, you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about Donald Trump. <laughs> okay, we can talk about Donald Trump <laughs> and Hillary Clinton. Both, you yeah. know, like listening to to them talk and listening to them ignore important issues. Mm-hmm. Like, how does that, you know, how is that affecting your music? You know, and how is it affecting your life, your day to day life? Well when you see a system that is so in such stark contrast to truth you know the natural reaction is to try to you know try to put truth into the world right when you see a system that's in such stark contrast to to love you know that's so fear obsessed and fear centric what do you have to put into the world love you know we have i think when we see such uh you know such destructive dialogue and such, a, like I said, such an aversion to truth, um, I, and and such an incredible aversion to empathy. I think that you, often we're overwhelmed. Like, what can I do? You know, mm. that yeah. we we talked we talked about that. Right. You know what right. I mean? Like, right. what what can I do? Um, and it's it's you know the the old aphorism is true, man. Like you can you can only do you can only do like you you have to live by example, right? You right. have to just. Right just embody those things in your day-to-day life. You know what I mean? And you, you have to embody truth. You have to embody love. You have to, you know, and all those things. It's not like we were talking about before. It's not, uh, it's not love and positivity, you know, because of naivety or ignorance. It's love and positivity in spite of the fear and hate that's in the world, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, that takes courage. That's, yeah. it's so, it's easy to give in to fear. Yeah. It's easy. You know? Man, so how do you overcome that? Because to me, like being a musician is very, is terrifying yeah. at times. You say, Absolutely. oh shit, man, how am I going to pay this rent? Like I got this girlfriend, it's her birthday, but I don't yeah. have no money. Like I got to figure all of this out. <laughs> but, you know, or like right now I got a lot of gigs, but man, shit, what am I going to do in six months? You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. how are you overcoming that fear? Um, man, well, I'm, it's going to be different. Are, are you even fearful? I'm sorry. I'm yeah. just assuming. I'm, no, I'm fearful, man. <laughs> I, I'm fearful. And, and I think, I mean, to be fearful is to be human, right? Mm-hmm. You know, but, but I try, 
I devote a lot of energy to not letting that fear overcome me, mm. you know, and to understanding my fear and hugging it and holding it close and telling that fear, you know, I, I see you, I hear you, and then, but I'm, you know, I don't need you and letting it move away, you know, and that's, that's, maybe that's a little bit, maybe that's a little, you know, nebulous, kind of esoteric, but I think, um, I think that it's impossible to disassociate with fear by focusing on fear, right? Damn. Okay. It's impossible to disassociate from anything by actively trying to disassociate from that thing because that's still where your focus is. Mm. So for me, what's the opposite of fear? Love. Courage. You know, courage. Yeah, all of these different <laughs> things. So I'm more interested in focusing on those things and letting, like I said, like understanding that fear, but then just letting that mm-hmm. move away. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's difficult. I mean, nobody. I don't have the answers, man. I don't know why you're asking me that. You got all <laughs> the answers. Have the answer. You got all the answers. <laughs> but but you know, but that's you know, it's just a focus on love, man. Yeah. You so, know? man, are you working on any interesting projects? I am, man. Um, I have a band that I've been thinking about putting together for a long time. That's now been pretty active. We did some we did some recording uh, called Baya B A I A. Mm-hmm. Um, got some links, to some videos. Okay, what's the link? Uh, it's gonna be right up there. Okay, it's gonna be right <laughs> up there. We don't know what it is, but it's just <laughs> right there. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and then I have uh, uh, the Bias Sessions, which is an entirely different project. Okay. Uh, the Bias Sessions is uh, my uh, on my YouTube channel. That's just gonna be um, duos and trios featuring different good friends of mine. Uh, most of the time, will feature their original music. Dope. So it's going to be cool. Yeah. Nice, man. Those are the two that I'm most excited about right now. Wow. That's amazing. So you guys, check it out. Check out the links that's going to be above and in the description. And uh, let them know what you think about the videos, even if you hate them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a, you, you, So recently you, you have a record or an EP that's coming out soon, mm-hmm. right? Let's talk about that. Like, How did you get to that point and what was the catalyst for you to be like, now is the time for me to record something and to release it for three years now i've been i've been dealing with a uh uh very speaking of fear (laughs) a really a pretty crippling physical issue on the as as a trombonist on my instrument uh a type of dystonia a type of focal dystonia also with a schwastic sign that turned into kind of an internal complex or chronic hyperventilation and i after years of not knowing what was going on and, and going to you know, every teacher and, you know, doctors, ENTs that I could find, um, without any answers, I finally found my way to this woman named Jan Kagerice. And Jan, uh, saved my career, you know, probably saved my life, at least metaphorically, man. Um, oh, wow. she, uh, she's, she's an incredible human being, incredible healer. And mm-hmm. I encourage any musician having any issues, not just brass players, any musician to go to her. She is the truth. I've sent so many friends to her. Um, but, in my recovery, a lot, a lot was having, you know, a lot of that had to do with, with trusting myself again and getting away from the fear of the instrument. You right, know, right. when you pull that instrument up and your body is afraid of it because your body has these natural associations with tension and angst and, and, uh, and hyperventilation, all this stuff. So like, I'm finally moving out of that. Mm-hmm. So I'm back to my duty as, as an artist and a, as a, you know, creative soul to, to, you know, have a little bit more output. And I think that healing has given me perspective. That issue gave me perspective. Um, and it's, t- it's just time to put, put out you know, some, it's time, man. And it, it, sometimes you just know it's time. So I have, I have these videos with, uh, with this band that I'm releasing. Um, and then we're doing a record in 2017. And then I'm also planning a second record with an entirely different group. Okay. Um, Damn, I'm that, fired. Yeah, I'm super. Ex- <laughs> I'm super excited about them, and both are going to okay. be exploring some. Uh, oh, both are going to cool. be exploring love. You know, that's great. And not in you know. Oh, it's more love. In in response to fear, you know, in in or in as an opposite, love is as, you know, a warrior of love, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, you made an interesting point, uh, or you, you made uh, just now when you said that you have to trust yourself again you know Mm -hmm. i feel like that's like one of that's one thing that as you don't really think about as a young person but like the older you get you realize that things are going to happen in life 
you're going to make bad decisions and then they're going to be so bad or they're going to affect you in such a way that you're going to have to learn the truth.